It's, uh, it's my joy to be able to speak to you on behalf, oh, I'm going to try to speak, try to get through it, but speak to you on behalf of the cousins, and eight of us, and uh, um, I think I'm the oldest, I guess I get the most years with Grandpa, but I think I, much of what I'll say, I think they can all relate to um, what Grandpa meant uh, for us as grandchildren. Um, I did have the blessing of being able to live in the same town as uh, both Holly and I got to live in the same town as, as Grandma and Grandpa for, well, at least for me, for 20 years, 18 years or so. And so, um, and being an officer, you meet a lot of people who don't have that benefit of knowing their grandparents or spending a lot of time with extended family. And I'll always be grateful just to just the, for the opportunity to get to spend all that time with them. And I'll come back to it a little later, but most of my memories are spending the summers up in Oscoda at the cottage on Lake Huron. Um, and I think everyone here, of course, would have um, something that they remember uh, my grandpa for. But um, the, even just the earliest memories that I have, um, and I'm just going to say a few things about what he meant for me. Um, but there's always the UNO games. I think UNO is a really simple game, and that was one of the first things I remember doing with Grandpa, was playing UNO. And um, it was funny, Holly would usually be with us, but she would quit when she got behind. And so, but Grandpa and I would, would continue on with playing the UNO, and we'd play her hand for us, um, for her. Um, well, that was the thing, Grandpa, you know, learning, I learned a few things and the things that we did with him. And with Uno, you know, it wasn't good to quit. So we learned we shouldn't quit, we should play it through even if we're behind, um, play out. Don't be a sore loser. Um, um, we, few games that I remember, I, um, I had forgotten about Racco. With one of the cousins, I remember we playing Racco with Grandpa or Uno, or when we got a little older, he would play Monopoly with us. And uh, the thing that I remember about all those games is that he never got tired of playing with us. Uh, I don't ever remember a time when any of the grandkids, no matter how young or old, would go and ask him to play with us, and he would always do it. And he would never get up and leave, or he would get tired of playing with us. He would always play with us as long as we wanted to, even for hours. It seemed like hours, anyway, when you're young. It seemed like he would just play with us for hours. And uh, one of the things I think we all agreed upon, even before we got here, when we were messaging each other, is the, the grandpa, his love of donuts. And um, I remember, um, you know, walking, especially at the, the cottage on Lake Huron, but he would want to walk up every morning to get a donut. And uh, I learned from that that you can have a donut every day and live to be 93. <laughs> and so I think it's a good, it's a good recipe to, you can have a donut every day and you'll be okay. Right. Um, something more um, personally for me, um, Grandpa taught me how to shake hands. And it doesn't sound like much, but it's really important, especially now as an officer, meeting a lot of people. Um, you don't want to do the limp fish, right, where you just kind of shake hands. He made sure that I uh, knew how to shake hands, the firm handshake, always um, greeting the person uh, with uh, confidence. And, um, and that was really important, and he took time to, um, to teach me that. He always treated everyone he met with equal kindness and interest. It didn't matter who it was. He always made sure that he was, and I think he was genuinely interested in, in their uh, well-being and, and what was going on in their lives and how was their family. And, and um, I, I remember that often when I'm meeting people, is that to, um, to, remain, to remain interested and uh, loving to the people um, that, that I meet. And I, I mentioned this in one of our gatherings this, this week, but he always, at least in my memory, he, wherever we went, it seemed like he would run into someone he knew. And it didn't, no matter, it didn't matter if it was Michigan or Florida or California. It seemed like, to me, as a kid anyway, that he knew 
Well, it seemed like he knew everyone wherever we went. And I, I thought my grandpa was a famous guy. He knew everybody <laughs> wherever we were. It didn't matter how far away from home. Uh, but I remember that was, that was important, that he would go up if he knew someone, or even if he didn't know them, or he recognized them, um, he would go up and make sure he talked to them. And so I try to emulate him in that, in being um, loving and kind and uh, compassionate to all that he met and all that he knew. Um, one, of, one of the things that uh, is a special memory to me, um, we mentioned already, uh, my grandpa played percussion. And um, I think I had two years of cornet, maybe. And, uh, and I, but I, I don't remember the cornet, but I, don't, I remember wanting to play percussion. And so after two years of the cornet, I said, no more, thank you. And I picked up some drumsticks, and I haven't looked back after that. Um, it, took, it took a long time through when, when I played in the core band, he wasn't playing. Um, but it took until I was probably 19 or 20 or so that I finally, at least in my memory, I got to play with him. And that was at the, in the CMI alumni band. And so that was a, a big joy for me, is finally to be able to play in the same uh, percussion section with uh, Grandpa. Um, I gotta mention sports. Um, I still love to watch the Tigers. Um, Tigers baseball is always a part of his life and it just kind of rubbed off on me anyway. Anything in Michigan football, Detroit Red Wings hockey. I even watch the Pistons every once in a while. Not very much anymore, but, um, but uh, sports was always um, part of the family, at least uh, growing up, and um, I'll always be thankful for that. Um, I always remember him doing the crossword puzzle. I think the cousins remember this too. I always seemed to be doing the crossword puzzle, and I was amazed that he could finish it. I mean, just some of these clues were so obscure. But and he always did it in pen. Uh, never pencil, he did it in pen. He knew what the, word, the answers were. And so if I try to, uh, I can't, I don't do crosswords all the time, but if I do, I can't do them in pencil or anything else. I have to have a pen. I think that's just, I thought that's how you're supposed to do crosswords, is ink. So that's what I do. Um, of course, as I mentioned before, much of my <coughs> memories of Grandpa was, um, was up in the, the cottage on Lake Huron in Michigan. Um, we had an opportunity to just be there, and I think, I think um, the, looking back on it, the, the thing that I remember that was so, mean, so meaningful is that um, we could go up there any time we wanted to, and uh, especially, uh, well, of course, when they were there, but we, we could just go up there and spend as many weeks as we wanted to. If we were able to, we could spend uh, three, four weeks the whole summer, uh, whatever we were able to do, and Grandpa was always ready to to um, make sure we were there and having fun. If we wanted to swim, he would take his chair out on the beach. And he was smart because he knew that water was cold. As kids, we didn't care. But, uh, he would sit out on the beach and make sure we were safe. Um, he was already, always ready to build a fire uh, in the evenings. And um, he even let us set off fireworks, bottle rockets. I, looking back, I don't know if that was very safe or not, but it was fun. And, we, and uh, we got to do that. So that's good memories that we have, that, that I have. Um, the last thing I want to mention, um, for me personally, um, one of the, I think the most important thing I learned uh, from Grandpa was how to be a Christian man, a good example of what a Christian man ought to be. Um, because I spent a lot of time with him, I could see him and just his life as a witness how a Christian man should act um, peaceably and with respect, uh, how a Christian man to, should speak to uh, other people with kindness and love and other members of his family, and how a Christian man should treat those around him. Uh, he showed me through his actions the light and image of Christ. I don't remember him ever getting angry with anyone. I'm sure he probably did, but not around us grandkids. Never angry with anyone. I never saw him treat a person poorly or with a lack of respect. 
And so, um, even, in, even now when I slip up, I sometimes think, well, Grandpa wouldn't have done that. I, Grandpa would have done, they had a little better response than I did, and I try to, to still emulate him. And um, I'm thankful uh, for, um, I'm 41 now, thanks, I'm thankful to God for those 41 years of being able to um, be with him and watch him and, and um, just have that uh, love from him. Um, I just shared two scriptures. Um, Proverbs 17, 6. Uh, children's children are crowned to the ages and parents are the pride of their children. And then Proverbs 16, 31. Gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained by a righteous life.